Hey everybody, it's Troy. I'm gonna show you 10 ways in which you can make your Zoom recorded webinar a whole lot better. The first thing you probably want to do is you wanna cut out all that stuff at the beginning, but don't do it yet uh, first. Go into your recording, once you've imported your Zoom recording into Camtasia, you'll see on the timeline your video and you can scrub through it. Just go to a spot where you've got the title and then on the playhead here, right click it and choose Add Exported Frame. It's gonna put that picture here into the timeline. We're gonna use it in a minute. Number two, we're gonna trim, right? So you get to the part of the video where they finally get started. It might sound a little bit like this. The Zoom video capture. So let's start off here with. All right, so they got this. So let's get started now. You might have to actually zoom in and you can use the zoom level over here to be able to see the audio a little bit better and even be able to kind of get an idea where the words start. You might go back and play it, uh, but ultimately you get to the point where you find the word and you're like, okay, great. That's where I want. And you click the split button over there on the timeline. And then uh, what I would do is I would just do a ripple, a delete. And that's going to now have your video start at exactly the spot that you want. Cool. So we've got the beginning of the video just right. This is where we bring in that title one more time. We're going to layer it on here. Maybe we'll just have it here on for a second. And uh, then we're gonna go to the third thing, which is transitions. Now, I can go to uh, transitions here, and there's a whole bunch that you can choose. My favorite, because it's simple and it's just, it's a classic, is the simple fade. I can grab that on here and have the audio just be going on while the title begins to fade away. Next thing we're gonna want to do is grab some music. So we're gonna go to the library. I'll look for audio. I can find a audio piece that sounds just about right for me. Let's say monophonic funk here for a little bit. And I've got a little bit of music. Maybe I only really want it to be, oh, I don't know, about, let's say, eight seconds long. Once again, hitting the split, deleting the part that I don't want. And, of course, we're going to fade that out. That'll be in the audio effects that we can then drag to the fade out. I can have that fade be as long as I want. And I can even bring the music down to be a bit like this. So it might sound Let's a little bit like this. start off here with the Snagit capture window. If you're brand new to Snagit, this is where you can set up your captures, where we have over on the And of course you can make that as long or as short as you like. Next, data protection. There's usually something in a webinar, despite our best efforts, there's something that shouldn't be in there. So we're gonna blur some of the pieces out. We're gonna go into the annotations. Over here, you see a tab and there's a little bit of a water drop over here. From there, we're going to choose one of these blurs and I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna drag it on here. And then I can simply take the edges and I can shape it to whatever size I want. Also, I can go over here and choose the intensity of that blur and make it as deep or as, as soft as I want. Also, down here on the timeline, one more time, I can zoom in on that timeline and I can say, you know, that really should be on for about so long. And as I've done before, I can go also to my transitions and even fade that in and out so that it fades in and out gently as we go. This one's one of my favorites. It's all about focus. It's zooming in so that people know exactly what's important on this screen. You'll see in this part of the webinar that uh, Ryan is talking about this new tool in Snagit. And as I move the playhead along, I can see that the, he's sort of circling around it with his mouse and then eventually he clicks on it and it expands and you can see the tools. Well, this spot in the screen is way more important than almost any other spot in the screen. Let's enhance that. I'm going to click on the video link itself. Shift A. It's a hotkey that I want everybody to learn. You hit Shift A and it automatically puts an animation on the timeline. Once I'm there, I can then go and scale that up. You'll also notice in what you scaled up, you'll notice this handlebar in here. This is sort of the anchor or the middle of the video and I can move it like that. So my video is going to go from here to here. 
and now I can see all of that in its glory. Cool, now that's pretty good. It's good enough for me for now because that's really the size that I want. I do want people to focus on that, but in a second, he sort of, it moves. He, it moves off screen or it like, it moves upwards to a different part of the screen. So, no problem. Uh, we're going to add another animation there. Shift A one more time. And from here, uh, if I want to, I can simply hit uh, restore all of my dimensions before and I zoom right back out. So zoom in, here we go, and zoom right back out. Alternatively, if I wanted to, I could scale this part in and I can grab my anchor and move down. So I can go from zoomed in down here to zoomed in up here. You can move this around and around and around to give people focus. My, my suggestion, find an opportunity if you can every minute or two to be able to move around to create some motion in there because motion is magic for your viewers sometimes there's a part of the screen that requires more attention we're going to draw the attention literally on uh, the screen here we're going to go to the annotations tab and then right up here there is a sketch motion option with lots of options down here uh, i'm going to choose the rectangle i'll draw it on the screen here because in a second there's going to be a fly out to the ui that i want to bring people's attention to yep there it is cool so i'll sort of bring the edges to it around about like that and you'll see that it sort of draws on here let's have it come in at just about the right time there we go now I don't like the yellow uh, so I'm going to change that by choosing the color picker and I can choose uh, any color that I want also I can make it a, a fair bit thicker and we see that it animates on here very Where you nicely want the can camera to be selected so there we go speaking of drawing attention uh, one of my favorite ways of doing that is using the library I've got uh, in this folder called emphasis effects bursts and collapse I'm gonna drag this onto the timeline over here just so you can see it it goes it animates as such you can start off with kind of like a hi how you doing this is Ryan I'm gonna show you okay of course we don't necessarily want it uh, bursting on Ryan but we're going to actually move this right down onto this brand new feature because we're going to talk we're gonna make this look really important uh, I'll zoom in on the timeline a little bit and play that back for us hi how you doing this is Ryan I'm gonna and as I mentioned before I can scale this up so that maybe it's, it makes even a bigger impact how you doing this is Ryan I'm gonna there we go okay Next, uh, here in the uh, library, you also have ex uh, expressive animations. I love the hand-drawn ones. I'm a huge fan of those. Uh, so if I wanted to have a little bit more of an informal feel, uh, I can drag that onto the timeline as well. And uh, it might animate uh, a little bit like this. Let me actually go through uh, step by step by step so you see how that animation draws out. And you've got a lot of hand-drawn options there as well. All right, next we're heading back to the annotations because in this part of the video, he uses a hotkey that if you don't show it on the screen, people might not get it. Here's how it plays out. For example, if I do Control Shift S. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a keystroke callout down on the timeline. Once again, annotations, and it's over here into the keystrokes. And I think he says Control Shift S. So over here, I click on and hold control and shift and S. And now I have that showing up over here. I can make that as big as I need to so that people can see what it says. Also, I can uh, put the modifier names on there and it shows up like this. Control shift S. And, I and of course I can make it longer or shorter as necessary. In this part of the webinar, the chat or the QA was blowing up. Uh, Ryan was showing a new feature uh, where people can go and add a comment on a video. And people were asking in the comment section, which Ryan couldn't see at the time, do you have to have a login? This was no, uh, but he wasn't able to address that until a minute or two or three later until somebody stopped him and interjected the question. So we can do that now. Um, 
all I'm going to do is I, I simply go to annotations and I can go uh, to the callouts. I can add some text. I can put it on the screen and it might just look like this. No login required. Eh, doesn't look great. We can do better. Let me show you how. Uh, so I'm going to go to uh, some animations. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt the video here to the left. And then once I'm done with my text, I'm going to restore it and kind of put the video back the way it was. So here it's going to go whoop off to the side. And then when I'm done, it's going to come on back. Now, what I did with the uh, text here is, and you can see in the, in the properties, is that I created something called the behavior. It's a fly-in behavior. The way I did it is I went to behaviors and I went to fly in and I simply dragged that onto the, the text there so that the text and the screen animate a little bit like this. Screencast.com from Snagit. You have 25 videos that you can share again at no and then it just flies back out. And as before, I can make that as short as I like and I can move the animations around as necessary to have the effects uh, that I would desire. Three, two, one. Last one, and this is a bonus feature, it's amazing. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to edit and audiate. First thing it's gonna ask me to do is you wanna save this? I'll say yes, please, and thanks. It's then going to open up audiate. Audiate is a companion tool to Camtasia in the same way that you have cars and then sometimes you can put a turbo on a car after you've purchased it. This is the turbo for Camtasia. Uh, it allows you to take any audio that you've done it turns that audio into editable text. Now in the current version that I have, it takes a 45 minute video and it begins transcribing it, in this case, 18 minutes. So I'm gonna speed this up, but you'll see in a second why there's real value in this. One of the beautiful things about Audiate is not only does it transcribe the audio for you into text, which you can turn into captions, but you also can identify the ums and the ahs. So if you're gonna put some polishing touches on your video and you want to make somebody sound professional, you can remove all of them and I'll show you how to remove all of them in a minute. But you can also visually scan it and you say, oh man, there's like three ums in here. What was going on? Because sometimes what happens, at least in my experience, is you can see that people are searching for words they can't remember something and so their mind uh, crunches its gears and it then is trying to find the words and ums and ahs and sues so for example here you can even choose where you want the cam camera to be selected so, or, or position so he's he's struggling with whether to call it camera and w whether to call it selected or positioned and so what I can simply do here is I choose that word where he said the cam I mean camera and we delete that right so it it can play out smoothly it, it, the video gets cut choose where you want the camera to be okay. selected I can also take out that little period which was uh, sort of an identifiable pause I've still got the ums and the ahs through here. The beautiful thing about Audiate is I can just delete them all. 171 go out. It automatically will crossfade all of them so it smooths its way in and out. You can still see where they were made here in the timeline. So if you really want to get back to and restore that audio, you can do that. And you can even go so far as to jump in here and you can see the waveform that was associated with that uh, if you need to do that. Additionally, if you want to, you can go and add effects on here, like remove plosives, remove noise that was maybe part of the recording. Audiate is an extraordinary audio tool uh, company in Camtasia, and when you're done, you can simply send it back to Camtasia. Send the audio back, the cuts in the video will be made, the ums will be removed, and you can even send back the uh, caption file as well. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoy editing your webinar in Camtasia.